Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be interviewing Ivy, who is a student in Federico Secondo. Ivy, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yourself? I'm all right as well. Um, so like I said, this is just going to be about the university talking like very casually. Usually we do a city part, but we're not going to do that today because we have another video uh, that covers Napoli. So with that being said, can you give me like a brief overview of the university and what type of student do you think like Napoli, like Federico Secondo in particular is perfect for? Okay, so with um, Federico Secondo, it's quite a nice city. It's one of the ones that's actually based in the hospital. So you're learning around where you're going to be going on placements and, as well. So with Federico Secondo, it's one of those, it's quite different to the rest of how, let's say, the UK or Europe would do it, where there's a lot of where you go directly into the hospital by your second year or anything, because it's quite theory based for a lot of the first few years. So you spend a lot of time, like, really getting deep into the theory, like learning all the basics, all the mechanisms. Like, they're very thorough on that. So if you really enjoy studying those sort of things, I didn't know this at first but yeah if it's one of those things that you enjoy then you'll really like it but like now that we're going into it well fourth year was online but if we were in person for fourth year that's when you actually start going into the hospital you see more patients and it becomes more practical but for the first three years you have to really be dedicated and really enjoy studying the actual theory of medicine before you actually get to the medical part so yeah Okay, but what about, um, like, for example, when I tell people uh, Rome is, like, good for people who are kind of, like, drawn to chaos and metropolitan areas, like, if you know, you like nature and stuff, you shouldn't, there's nature in Rome, but, like, maybe Messina might be better for you. So, in that sense, like, what type of student do you think uh, Federico Secondo would be suited for? Yeah, I think um, Napoli is quite similar to... Uh, Rome as well where it's just quite chaotic it's very city based if you but the nice thing about Napoli as well is like we have some residences that are quite near the seaside so if you do like the ocean it's easily accessible you can get to the um, ocean if you like the beach or whatever or well, it's not an actual beach but there's the ocean that you can go sit by and that's quite near, near the city center as well so if you do like any water-based activities or if you just like to be at the sea then Napoli is a really nice place to go otherwise the city itself is very busy very chaotic and gets quite hot during the summer as well but yeah so if you do want a bit there are some parks but it's not a very scenic city per se when you're studying there yeah, yeah. okay and what about your class timetables like what are what is the i don't know like do you study in the mornings the evenings uh when are your exams like could you run me through the timetables and the calendar briefly okay like that's fine um so for the timetable itself for our university for federico Secondo, we have classes every single day so this is from i think from one till five is when we have classes sometimes it goes a bit afterwards but that's when we have so our classes are in the afternoon and then for fourth year we have placements in the morning as well so you have placement from 8 until 12, I think it is. So that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's how it is for now. And then afterwards, you have a classes. So every day you have classes in the afternoon, and then you have placements on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But then otherwise, for the first three years, you just have classes in the afternoon every single day. And then the term starts from October to December is the first semester. And then you have your exams from January till March. And then from mid-March, you start your second semester until June. And then next exams begin in June till june july august and then well no june july and then august is Ferragosto, so i don't think there are any exams during august and then you have the third session which is september october if you need it so um even in first year you start classes in the evening like from one to five yeah so from the beginning uh -huh. it's always been in the afternoon that that's interesting because almost all of the universities at least in first year you do like 9 a.m to like whatever time so i guess uh it's good for the night owls <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I guess so. if you like to wake up late, then I guess it's like a good Yeah, that, to... that must be so good. I had to become a morning person when I moved here because I usually love staying up until like 5 a.m. and then wake up at uh, 1 p.m. Oh, wow. that, that would have been so perfect. Oh, God, I was forced into being an early person. Um, okay. You're confused because I like to wake up early. I like to do things in the morning and then be free in the rest of the day. But now it's like, you have to do it the other way around. So uh, yeah okay that's kind of cool though and so then uh like speaking of exams what are what are the exams like are, are like they mainly oral are they mainly written are they mixed modality how, how do the exams work um most exams are both of them so you do the written first and then you get the pass mark of 18 and when you get 18 then you move to the oral exam so that's how majority of the exams work there's the odd one histology we have to get 24 why i don't know why they made it like that and then you move to the oral exam but there are a few subjects that they have here and there with like physiology for example was just an oral exam and then 
uh, which one? I think nephrology and neurology that we just recently did as well was also just oral. But most of the time, it is a multiple choice written exam. And then once you pass that, then you move to the oral exam afterwards. Okay, cool. So pretty like basic. Um, yeah. I think it's like standard. And then, uh, so, okay, I'm just looking at the list of questions, sorry. And you briefly talked about like the clinical experience, but could you give like a more um, like an overview of it? Like starting from first year, do you even go in for one or two days? Like in sixth years, do you become mainly like clinical work? Are there practical activities? Like what is the, all of the hands-on experience? Like just a brief oh. overview of it. Um, I think the first time we actually went into the hospital itself was in second year. So first year, I don't think we did anything that was actually in the hospital. And then in second year, it would just be like a couple of days in the semester just to see what it's actually like. And then in third year, they tried to get us a bit more involved where we'd go with some of the Italian students as well and then just sit in the office or we just follow one of the um, interns around. And then you can also go see the surgeries as well. And then if you do want, you can always just feel free to like, they're very, like a lot of the professors are very helpful. So if you are really interested in one of the um, subjects that you're learning, you can email them and they'll allow you to come in, watch surgeries or just follow them around for like at least one day a week. They'll, they're very like accommodating to allow you to do that as well if you want to. And then from fourth year you have, because you have to start your thesis from oh, from fifth year, is that's when, so fourth year, fifth year is when you can start like figuring out which lecture you actually want to do your thesis with. So that's when you see that person more often. So you go one or two days a week in addition to the actual placement that you have so that would be like your own personal clinical clerkship I guess and then when you're actually doing it with the class you're divided into like little groups so you're in groups of three they usually do it as Italians in their own groups because then the doctor can just speak Italian to them and then like the foreign students are usually grouped together as well and then you go around you follow the doctor they'll teach they'll talk to you about what's happening if you need like at that point it's quite easy to understand what the patient's saying in Italian but the doctor will always like ask you oh do you need me to explain anything did anyone have any questions and then yeah so you do it according to the subjects that you have during during that semester. So if you have cardiology that semester, you'll go on a placement for cardiology, nephrology. And then if you have something different the next semester, like rheumatology, head and neck, then you'll go to those departments. So it's according to what you're actually learning in class. Okay. And so like you said that the professors are quite nice with like translations and stuff. So does that mean that- Most um, of them. I'll make it clear. Most of them are. <laughs> Most of, okay. That is a pretty important clarification. I was like, oh, that's like really nice that they make sure like all the time. Um, so it's, I guess it's not like a requirement, like there's no Italian certificate requirement to get to a certain year or to start clinicals, right? Because like some universities make you pass an Italian exam before you're allowed to start doing practical activities. Is there no, something they like- said, okay. Our university, they haven't said anything about Italian. I think they just assume if you're in Napoli, you'll pick up Italian. So they're like, you, you, do what you want. If you learn Italian, learn it. If you don't, that's your own story. Okay. So yeah, they, have, they didn't require any certificate or anything. Okay. Do they provide uh, Italian classes? They tried to for like one semester and then we never heard anything from them again. So we don't. <laughs> That's such a classic <laughs> Italian thing, to be honest. Like, okay. So there are allegedly possibly classes, but we don't. You... Yeah. I mean, like, if you have the um, ones that are for free that are provided for, I think it's the Italian, the Neapolitan Council government or anything. There are free classes you can go to if you want to learn Italian, which is nice, mm -hmm. but they're just... If you're not living in the center, they're quite hard to get to. But if you're living in the center, then you can go to those free classes, which is fine. Um, is the is the university located in the center? Like, because uh, I, I remember trying to go and get pictures of it, but it was bringing up two different campuses and I wasn't sure, like... Oh, uh, uh, yeah. The, like, the main, main Polyclinical campus is in the center, like, right next to Central Station and all of that. But then the actual Federico Secondo for the medicine is located a bit further out. You can still get there by the same metro you can, like, everyone takes. But it's a bit further out of the center. So there's the main campus and then there's the hospital one, which is at its own stop called Polyclinical. Oh, so handy. And uh, you do your, but you do your classes in Polyclinico or you do your classes in the main campus? All of our classes are at Polyclinico, so they're all based in the hospital. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. And what about uh, dissections? Do you guys do like cadaver dissections or anything mm -hmm. like that? I don't do no. that. The closest we've got to anything like that is probably um, anatomical pathology <laughs> where you look in the microscope. That's probably it for histology. But other than that, we don't do any dissections, sadly. Okay, okay. I mean, not a lot of the, I don't think any of the, uh, oh yes, my god, I cannot, 
talk today. Okay, none of the universities actually do a dissection. Some of them do prosections, though. Um, okay, cool. And so, you know, Napoli, like when I was there, I found it to be a very like affordable city. So how does that work for the university fees? Are they like, how are they priced? Um, yeah, so the university is very affordable, <laughs> if I'm being fair, because um, because I have a UK passport, so I pay, well, EU fees from when the UK was in the EU. So I, I think it's not a lot. I think in total it comes to around 500 and something euros. So you pay the tax for the school and then you pay the actual like tuition fee, which is another 200. So the tax is like 200 then the tuition fee is 200 and then you pay some other tax, which is 20 or something. So it doesn't come up to very much. But then I do know for other students, if you're not from Italy, then they do it like according to this document. I don't know if you, the ISE, Parificato. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you get the, and then they give you your fees according to that. But it's still... I haven't heard of anyone who's paying more than a thousand euros. Okay, yeah. Well, I think one thousand euros is still like very affordable. Uh, yeah. Especially when you consider it to like the prices in the UK or America. It's like yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. And what about scholarships? Do you know anything about like? Um, yeah. So it's the same scholarship that works for Luigi Van Vitelli for and Polytechnico. So it's the same um, Adisu is the main of governing a body, I guess, of the scholarship. So that's the one where you have to reach a certain amount of credits for every single year. And then you apply for the scholarship and then they give you the scholarship of 5,000 euros for the whole year. That's so good. So, but, yeah. okay, so anyone can apply to this and all you have to do is have your credits. Uh... Yeah, so anyone can apply for it and all you have to do is have your credits up to the standards. So every year they say how many credits you need. Uh -huh. um, I've heard of some weird stories that like, for, if you do it for the first year, it's like a conditional scholarship. So if you do it as soon as you get to Napoli, then you have to make sure you definitely get the credits. Otherwise, you have to pay back the scholarship. So not many people do it in their first year. But like by this, like if you're doing it for the second year, then you already have your first year credits, if that makes sense. Because okay. you use the credits. Yeah, so oh, most people just... Oh, okay, okay, it. okay, okay. Okay, yeah. I get it, I get it. So like basically you're applying as if you're applying for first year because then... Okay, 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 I think I get it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's going to be hard to explain, but I, I totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good way because then, because most students are behind on their exams, so it gives them like yeah, a little buffer. Yeah, there's always like keep up to date as well. Yeah, all right. Okay, okay, that's pretty cool. But that's that's the regional ones. Like, do you know if Federico Secondo themselves like offer, you know, like, because we have things like called uh, Borsa di Collaborazione, which is like where you can work for the university and it's kind of a type of scholarship. Um, I think they have it for the Italian students, but for the English course, we haven't really heard much of it, sadly. So I don't know much about it. I haven't heard of anyone who has that benefit. Okay, cool. But I mean, like, 5,000 euro, that's like pretty stonks. So. Yeah, it's enough to get you through the year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, what about, like, how would you describe your class dynamics? Like, are you guys uh, a lot of people? Is the age range? Like, what's the diversity like? So. Uh -huh. Uh, for the class that I'm in now, I think we're maybe 20 students. It's not a very big class. So the whole year is That's 20 so students. small. I thought... Yeah, we're a really tiny class. I thought you guys were like over 50. I don't know why I thought that, but... Luigi and tell you, they have bigger classes. So they're over 50, but we um, we have quite small classes. Um, okay. And then it's kind of like maybe a 50-50 split between like 50% are Italians, but from all over Italy. And then the other 50 is from everyone who's everywhere else. So there's... Who's, where are people from? So from Greece, from Nigeria, from Iran, from well, Uganda, UK. So it's like the rest of them is quite, it's quite mixed. And then also there's quite a few, there's a couple of Israelis as well. Um, so the age range is kind of from people, well, if in first year. So in first year, you'd have people who just come out of school. So they're like 18, 19. But then you also have some people who already have done a degree. So they'll be like in their mid twenties, almost 30 sort of. So you do have like quite a range of ages, but you kind of just, like after a while you just kind of learn how to interact with each other so it's quite a nice mix yeah that does I, I can't believe how small the class is like i'm just so blown away by that <laughs> and so then you since you're so small you must all like work together pretty well like is there like a sense of collaboration yeah. so do you, nice thing yeah. that you can always just you know everyone who's in your class is easy to get along you can always have like your small little like class get togethers as well which is nice yeah and what about the years above and the years below? Like, do you guys, uh, do the years above you help you and then you guys help the years below you? Like, what's the yes, intern class? Yes, um, <laughs> um, 
this year, well, the academic year that just passed, that was the first graduating year for Federico Secondo. So that was for the English course, that is. Um, so they were really helpful because they were the first, like, they were like the first, first class of the English course. So they had everything firsthand, nothing to help them. So because they knew what it was like to have no help at all, they've been really helpful in like trying to explain, oh, what to expect for this exam, what to expect from this lecturer, how to study best, what materials they use, what textbooks they use. So it's like kind of passed down the generations onto like how to help each other so it's quite it's quite helpful so everyone's kind of knows who to speak to and everyone we have like a Facebook page as well if you have any questions that you want me to ask okay that's pretty cool that's nice do you guys have a spobina like the transcripts did they create them um, it depends like you have to organize yourself like I know for a couple like some of the major major classes like for the for this past year we have one for cardiology and pharmacology because those are quite big subjects and then um, for the other ones, it's usually you just make your own notes. And if someone is nice enough to share their notes, then they share it with the class. Yeah. OK. OK. That's pretty nice. And what about uh, your professors? Like in general, I know professors can really change and not they're not it's never going to be the same. But overall, would you say that like the professors are nice and they help you guys out or? I think in general, a good 70 percent of them are actually really invested in class and they come to class and they actually for, I remember for that year where we were online the whole year, there were some of the professors, they just kind of not show up and they just kind of upload their slides or, or whatever. But there were some lecturers as well who'd actually come to class. They'd even try to do group activities so that people aren't just sitting in silence for the hour, but you actually have discussions and all of that. That's really but nice. Actual classes as well, most of them are quite helpful. And since our classes are quite small, it's easy to ask questions. You don't feel like there's any pressure or anything as well. So they try to make the lesson. Most of them try to make the lessons interactive. Some of them, I will admit, some of them will just read the slideshow for an hour straight. And you're just like, I could have been at home for this. So it, majority of them are actually quite decent. OK. And uh, like I know now because of uh, like long distance learning and stuff, you might not have had as much uh, experience of the hospital and the teaching facilities. But what about uh, like teaching facilities in general, like the labs? I don't know, like uh, practical things like I don't know if my question makes sense. OK, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, because I think for the years where we had histology, it would be what, the most practical thing we did was, you know, the different slides with the microscope and everything. But um, we don't really have labs per se but we do have what else do we do so we just go into the hospital for the ones that we did do and then you can do some patient examinations as well so they show you like how to do the basic examination respiratory and um exam as well and then they'll like walk you through it step by step and they'll let since we're in small groups that like everyone can have a go and then they can also just give you an example of how to take blood pressure like the basic things that you do on a general checkup and then that's what we've done so far really we haven't done any invasive things because yeah we're not no, really. i mean that's fine but like i mean like what about like your classrooms like are the desks nice are the um, the desk yeah. um yeah so we're all in one building which is a nice thing like all the english courses are in one building together and all the room first year we had a terrible room where like this when it would rain the ceiling would leak and then, no! the was <laughs> so and then they moved us all to a different building and it's a lot nicer like everyone it's one of those ones where it's like um it's like a mini auditorium so you have those desks that fold in front of you so it's nice if you're but i'm left-handed so it's not the most comfortable thing for me okay so, yeah. but if you are right-handed it's a very nice place yeah and there's like lots of places where you can like plug in your laptops to charge as well so it's oh that's be. really handy um yeah so what about the libraries then like um yeah so there's a library that's in the building 20 i think that's what it's called it's so you can go there and study like in before class after class whenever as well and then there's also the biotechnology building so that's like a bit of a newer building so they have nicer study areas nicer libraries as well um so there are places that are on the campus where you can go to just read and study and it's quite spacious well lit and people actually keep quiet so it's nice no, that does really sound nice. And what about uh, like sports and canteen facilities? Like, are do you have a course? Do you have a gym in the university? Um, so for the canteen, there what there is a cafeteria in the uh, in Polytechnico itself. Um, I'm not sure because when it was online, they kind of cancelled the thing that's called the Mensa card, which gives you a three euro meal. So I don't know. I think this year it might be back where you can pay three euros for a primo secondo and a. I don't know, dessert or whatever, an uh, extra. So that would be from the canteen, or you can go to the hospital that's also across the road. And then there's also one near the residence in Furigrata, but I don't know if the residence is still there. And then for gyms, 
there's no gym on the campus. You just have to use a private gym. And for the sports facilities as well, I, I haven't heard of any sports teams really maybe the italian course so they have sports teams but usually we just organize our own sports events like we'll have like a football match here and there or um we'll play tennis or just like small things that you organize yourself amongst like amongst yourself as students otherwise you just have to join a private gym yeah he, in sapienza we have a gym but it only has one treadmill and a sign that says oh. please don't use for more than 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> which I, which I, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is kind of tragic. Like I think it's so funny, especially because uh, it has over a hundred thousand students and it just has one track. Oh wow! <laughs> um, okay, so I think that kind of basically, I think we like flew through everything. Is there anything that you kind of wish you knew or you wish that someone from your university would have told you before you uh, enrolled? Like, is there some like a, a warning almost mm. that you would give to people? Not a warning, but like what you wish you knew. First of all, I wish I knew the oral exams. I completely didn't know about oral exams at all. That was a shock. I was like, oh, we have to speak? Okay. That was a big shock to me. But that's probably because I just didn't research properly. Like, everyone knows that now. Um, also, I think I would have liked to know a bit of how chaotic Napoli is in general. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be that chaotic. Like, a lot of the things you have to really have a lot of patience for. Like, if you're getting your um, residence, uh, those people who get their permesso, I pray for you guys, it's not the best experience you'll ever have. <laughs> but once it's done, and, like, there have been a lot of bad stories about that. Like, people have got their permesso expired. People just haven't got them in general. So that's also a story. Like, if I was coming from non-EU, then that would have also been a big issue. And then... Renting a house is okay, but it's not the easiest thing as well. So I think that's also why I kind of moved into an actual residence itself because renting is just a lot of to deal with with the landlords and then they have all these funny contracts and sometimes they don't want to give a contract and then there's a lot of paperwork and it's a lot it's just a lot of back and forth that you don't really want. So, so sorry, you stay in like a student residence? Yeah, so now I'm staying in the student residence. There's now. dormitories. Could you tell me a bit uh, more yeah, about but that? It's not part of the university, it's part of like the the same body that does the scholarships runs the dormitories as well so they're located like the one that I was staying at was quite far out you have to take two trains so two 20 minute trains basically to get to Polyclinico which isn't terrible but it's a bit further than if you're living in the actual center so the, the one that's in the center is okay it's not in the best area but it will be easier to get to classroom but then the other ones are a bit further out of the center if you wanted to live in them and uh, so how much do the dorms cost then? Or is it a part of the scholarship? Uh, so so it's free? If you have the scholarship, then I think they take the money directly out of your scholarship for the dormitory. So you don't have to worry about rent for the whole year. And then you, for the one that I was staying in, it was 200 euros a month. So that's, that's so cheap. Or everything included. So did you share you a room or did you have your own room? Um, no, if you're sharing a room, it's 160. That's person. so cheap. I can't believe that. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, dang. <laughs> Oh, I, got, I, I shouldn't curse on the video, but dang, like that's so cheap. I can't believe that. I paid three times that amount. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. I'm not angry or anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so the housing, if, if you would recommend students to just go for a residence since it's so cheap and you don't have the hassle of finding a place and signing a contract and, you know, sometimes the landlords are... Yeah, yeah. but I'd recommend go for like in your third year because in the first year you'd actually want to be in the center so you can go meet people easily actually get a feel from the city because like when you're living in the residences it's you barely ever see the center of Napoli it's like you're not even living in Napoli anymore so I'd recommend like for the first year actually live in the center see people get to know people see what the life is like in the actual city and then yeah you'd enjoy it a bit more and then when you're tired of the city then you move out to a residence okay okay yeah um I honestly, I feel like that's everything. I don't feel like I'm forgetting anything. I hope not, <laughs> but <laughs> cool. Like the only other thing would be like uh, the level of Italian of the city, but um, like, how would you recommend the English level throughout the city and the university? It's, yeah, hardly anyone speaks English. <laughs> like it's very rare to find someone who speaks English. Okay, so you recommend like also learning as soon as possible? Yeah, so you'd have to do like a bit on the side, so you at least know enough to get around and get through everything. Okay, cool. Uh, Ivy, thank you so, so much for this conversation. Ivy. Yeah, uh, and I guess I'm just going to <laughs> end the video. One second. <laughs>